Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And this is a 2013 Ford Expedition. In this video, along with my colleagues, we're going to be demonstrating how to service and diagnose a starter. It is best suggested to have an electrical circuit of a component. In this case, a diagram of the starter circuit is what you're going to need. And these are all the components shown, fuses, and whatnot from the junction box all the way down to the starter motor. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Rafael and demonstrate you what you need to know on the highlighted portions of this diagram. This is the wiring diagram for the Ford Expedition. This is the starting system. So right here, where the smart junction box is behind the right kick panel, you're going to start. This is always hot. So you have your 27, your fuse, which is number 27. It's going to lead straight down. This is your ignition switch, basically where you start your car. One is in, one is, right now is open, but one is closed. It's going to send signal all the way down to the PCM. The PCM is going to send signal to the starter relay which also starts other components and then it's going to open this up for the relay to close this switch which if you see over here this is the uh, junction box in the center of the engine bay which is basically in the front of the vehicle all right so fuse 13 all right it's going to close here it's going to send the signal all the way down this is a starter motor so right here you have two loads here that close this switch which in turn start this motor. The switch gets power through the battery which is grounded either by the chassis or anywhere that it you know the people who designed this put it there and then the ground for the uh, relay is on the PCM as well. Now another thing to also know that right here it's not highlighted but this TR-P this is the transmission, basically what keeps it in park or tells the PCM that the vehicle is in park so that you can even get the vehicle started. To service and diagnose a starter, you're going to need to do some testing. And first test that you're going to do is a cranking voltage test. In order to do this test, you got to disable the ignition or the injection to prevent the engine from starting. Then you're going to put a voltmeter across the battery posting while cranking it with a key or an external remote starter. Crank it for at least 15 seconds, no longer than that. And you gotta make sure that the voltage remains at a 9.6 volt reading or above. The purpose for this test is to simply check if the starting circuits and the starter are in good condition. If they're reading below 9.6, then there is an issue going on with the starting circuit. And if there's an issue that's making the voltmeter reading below 9.6 volts, then you're going to test the battery capacity, the starter circuits, and the starter cranking current. Another test that you have to perform is a starter draw test. To do this, you gotta remember you gotta remove the ignition fuse and use an amp clamp to measure the amperage. Always keep in mind that a starter will have between 60 to 150 amps with no load into it, which will mean it's a good starter, and 250 amps when it's under load while cranking the engine. The next test that you have to do is a voltage drop test, which you will connect the positive cable of the multimeter to the positive end of the battery and the ground end of the multimeter to the positive side of the starter. As shown earlier in the video, there are different ways to get a voltage drop test on not just the battery but also on the starter. Meaning you have to connect the positive end of the cable of the multimeter to a certain end and the negative to a certain end. To get different voltage readings and see what they land on. The readings that are going to be shown on this procedure may be correct and maybe not. But to keep it short, they're almost at the right spec readings as they should be. It's just, if you want it to be exactly as it is, or a little bit above in spec, it's either not enough power on the battery, or something may be going on in the circuits. The principle of a relay is the principle of an electromagnetic attraction. When a circuit of a relay senses the fault current, it energizes the electromagnetic field, which produces a temporary magnetic field. This magnetic field will move the relay armature for opening or closing the connections. 
So anyways, these are all the steps that you need to do to diagnose and service a starter. I hope we helped you out and have a nice day or evening.